I'm Jackie Kearns, Special Educator at the University of Kentucky Human Development Institute and Project Director for Communication Projects. I'm Judy Page, a speech-language pathologist and faculty member in Communication Sciences and Disorders at the University of Kentucky. We provide professional learning and team coaching for school teams supporting beginning AAC users. This video is about one school team's journey to support a beginning AAC user. We would like you to meet Tyler, a kindergartner at Southeast Elementary School in Ravenna, Ohio. An elementary school student named Tyler is in his classroom. He is playing Go Fish and smiling. Tyler is using his AAC device to communicate. Tyler came to kindergarten with a new augmentative and alternative communication device that he kept hidden in his backpack. After all, no other students in his kindergarten class used a tablet to talk. They used their voices, words, gestures, and facial expressions to communicate, but nobody else used a talkie. Tyler is sitting at a table in front of his AAC device. He is typing on it to communicate with an educator. While this story is about Tyler, it is also about a team of educators determined to successfully include Tyler with his same age peers in kindergarten and help him learn to use this thing called a talkie to communicate information that gestures and facial expressions couldn't convey. Tyler is working on a math worksheet using manipulatives to model the solutions. He uses his AAC device to communicate with an educator. The video clips in this story were collected at the end of second grade after three years of team meetings, including virtual learning caused by the pandemic, natural transitions from kindergarten to first grade and first grade to second grade, and changes in support personnel. We've highlighted what the individual team members learned from working together as an interdisciplinary team. Their interviews focus primarily on three evidence-based practices to support AAC users in inclusive settings. First, working as a collaborative team, including joint training and regular team meetings. Second, aided language modeling to help Tyler learn his new communication system. And third, integrating peers as an important part of Tyler's journey to use Talkie. In addition, the team identified a fourth practice that contributed to Tyler's success, giving him some choice and control in how he communicates and when he uses talkie with peers. This story began when regional consultant Dee Dee Howes reached out to John Lamana, the district special education director, about a training opportunity provided by the Ohio Center for Deaf-Blind Education. The training focused on identifying communication and teaching students to use AAC. After the training, school-based teams could choose to participate in monthly team meetings, facilitated by training leaders, Dr. Kearns, which is me, and my co-trainer, Dr. Judy Page. These team meetings were to be focused on helping the team identify strategies for helping a selected student develop functional communication skills Tyler's team volunteered to participate. This video is their story. So let's meet the members of Tyler's kindergarten team and get their initial takes on Tyler as a kindergartner, as well as their experience teaching Tyler to communicate and working together. My name is John LaManna. I am the Special Education Coordinator for Southeast Schools in Portage County. And I've been a participant on the team since uh, we first joined, I believe in the 2019-2020 school year where we um, took part in two in-person trainings that year. And then since that time, we've done virtual meetings with the team every other month or, or pretty close to that. So uh, reflecting back, I'd say probably the, the most important thing that our team gained was the professional development for working with uh, the student that we referred. Dee Dee Howes, our state support team rep, uh, offered the training to us at a time that uh, the student was just um, entering kindergarten. So it really was just a perfect storm. We were looking for some ways to uh, help educate the student to demonstrate learning in, in the setting and the team was ready to also learn those strategies. So I'm Dee Dee Howes and I'm a special education consultant with State Support Team Region 8. I tried to think about teams that I uh, districts that I thought would have the capacity to make that kind of commitment to monthly meetings. And just from my knowledge of the school districts that I work with, thinking about you know the teams that 
would be able to easily identify a target student where I thought they would have buy-in and would be able, as I said, just to commit to the process. And so um, I you know, knew some of the staff out here at Southeast, know their special ed director, and I knew that they had students who had pretty significant communication needs. And so I just reached out and asked them if they would be interested. I explained what the project would entail, uh, the work that we would focus on. And I really tried to highlight how the tools that, that they would acquire as a team and the process that we would develop could be replicated to help other students. So although we were gonna target one student, the goal is to be able to replicate that over and over again. And so the, the impact would be long-term. And that was sort of my elevator pitch, if you will, to, to get them to participate. So um, initially, Ty we started when Tyler was in kindergarten. And so those of us who were on the project from the very beginning, um, you know, I, as I said, I would come in person pre-pandemic and, um, and Tyler was very uh, apprehensive, did, did not initiate communication, um, was not necessarily fond of having, you know, strangers uh, come. And so when I would um, communicate with him and I would greet him. Tyler is playing Go Fish. Both he and his partner are using the AAC device to communicate. He has a very great sense of humor. He's a fun, fun guy, um, but he was a little bit apprehensive. I'm Luann Nowak and I'm the speech and language therapist at Southeast Schools and I work with Tyler um, in his communication device. And you've been on a team for three years. Three years. Um, and really it's been an amazing experience. When I first heard about Tyler coming to kindergarten from preschool, I'd only had minimal experience with students with communication devices. So I was a little bit nervous and I knew that I could, could learn how to use it and that I could help him with his communication skills. But there's always more that goes along with working with the child than just their communication. And, and that part was scary. And so um, we were asked to be part of the communication competency team. And we went to um, a training in Columbus and then had monthly sessions, um, coaching sessions, which really helped with um, knowing what to do. Well, I'm Kristen Clark. I'm the regular education teacher. Tyler was in my kindergarten class. Um, we got kind of, it was short lived because mm -hmm. COVID um, happened and uh, so we kind of had to transition to um, an online format and do the best we could in that situation but it was definitely a learning year and it was neat to see how he would communicate but also what our goals were and how we can kind of push forward with things that he wouldn't necessarily go to on his own mm -hmm. um, so it was definitely a learning curve but we worked together and I felt like we we made strides mm -hmm. but a lot of times it was up against you know his will versus what our goals were for him. And I'm Angie Briggs. I'm the intervention specialist and I had Tyler two years ago back in kindergarten with Kristen. So just getting him to use it and it becoming part of his daily routine was kind of a big goal at the beginning. And so that's where that good morning greeting came from. And we didn't want him to be out on an island. So we had all the students participate and do that with him as well. So everyone gave me a good morning greeting. Mm -hmm. um, and then it kind of transitioned to having not only him, but some of his friends have a turn to announce mm -hmm. the special class that we get to go to that t today. Like today is gym or today we would go to art. And so that was kind of the next step. And mm -hmm. in addition to him announcing where we were moving around the room, which he did a little yeah. bit more so in your room, but mm -hmm. um, that was kind of the next step. So we were trying to find different ways where we can kind of incorporate into a normal, typical routine so that it became just typical and expected um, so that he kind of knew he wasn't going to get out of right. using the tool even if he didn't want to. Uh, my name is Burr Wellington. I'm a physical therapist here at Southeast Schools. I've had the pleasure of working with Tyler since preschool and have seen a lot of growth as uh, just a young man in general. Uh, I work with him with his gross motor, but I've also enjoyed seeing his growth uh, through communication. Tyler's mom, Rebecca, had this to say. I think it has been a huge improvement for Tyler. Having the communication, um, being able to figure out where um, we needed more focus as a team with either the device, with his work at school, whatnot. It is just helped build upon a better um, understanding and a better um, physical aspect of where he is and how to help him. I believe his knowledge of electronics to begin with. Wow. He has always been big with his iPad or um, a computer. So having 
the talkie, as we call it, the AAC device, has helped maneuver from your apps on your iPad to touching the what could look like apps on Taki to help build more strength in utilizing the device. I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, my name is Stacy Wills. I'm the teacher of students with visual impairments and I came on the team um, not during the initial part of the communication force but maybe I think the end of their first year. And the team had questions about um, Tyler's vision and you know he was having a difficult time with the communication device. And so I did an evaluation to determine, okay, but can he actually visually access the device? And we found out, yes, he can access the device, um, but he needed some additional supports so that he could gain some visual recognition of the icons and the print. So I think when you get to know Tyler, you see that he does things very well in isolation. So now it's about making it more general and helping him to generalize the recognition of that print from isolated time with me or isolated time on the device to, okay, but we see print throughout the environment and we see print in reading and print is literacy. Um, he definitely has made some strides in the fact that he was very um, dependent on similarity and everything had to remain the same. And now we're starting to see that he's generalizing his understanding of print and letter formation. Dr. Page will describe our monthly coaching meetings. In our role as team facilitators, Dr. Kearns and I led monthly half hour coaching meetings with Tyler's team using distance technology. We had great attendance at these meetings. In addition to building staff, Dee Dee Howes, the regional consultant, served as the team coordinator, and John Lamana, the special education director, brought district leadership and resources to the team. Now remember, when we started this journey with Tyler, he was hiding talkie in his backpack to avoid having to use it. If a school team doesn't know how to encourage AAC use, what often happens in a situation like this is that the AAC device remains in the backpack, literally or figuratively, and doesn't get integrated as a viable communication mode. Our goal was to help Tyler's team avoid this undesirable outcome by helping them identify and implement strategies that would be effective in helping Tyler learn to use his talkie. In our monthly coaching meetings, we helped Tyler's team reflect on his progress in the past month, offered suggestions for them to consider if there were problems, and assisted them in developing an implementation plan for the next month. Many times, all we had to do was encourage them to keep using their plan strategies, giving them more time to work. Tyler's team faced unexpected challenges, with COVID intervening just as they were getting started. Despite the challenges, the team persisted for three years, incorporating new teachers and support providers, changing teachers as Tyler changed grade levels, and successfully bridging year-to-year -year transitions, which for most AAC users can be problematic. The happy result of their efforts has been successful annual transitions and continued progress for Tyler. Progress made despite the challenges presented by COVID. This is a real credit to Tyler's team and a testament to their dedication and persistence and to Tyler himself. Let's hear from the new team members about their experience being added to an existing team. My name is Kelly Simmons. I'm a second grade teacher at Southeast Local Schools. I work with Tyler. I work with Tyler um, when he is in my classroom. He is in there for whole group activities. He is in there when we're doing our work board activities, which is when ind individual students work on their own work. If he needs help, he will ask peers to help him because at that time I'm pulling other students and he is not able to ask me for help. He needs to be able to ask them for help and they normally walk him through it. Typically he doesn't use his talkie in my room. There are times that he will use it, um, no more during math or if he wants to show me something. If um, we are doing a writing assignment, I will ask him to use his talkie instead of trying to figure out what he says because I can, I know what he's saying. Hi, I'm Mrs. Krieger and I'm an intervention specialist and I work with Tyler who uses his ACT device. 
um, and I work with him in math. So we've learned how to use the device and find those features on the device that have the math feature or the math icons on there. And we're able to work through his numbers and telling time and things like that with that device. I've I've enjoyed learning how to work the device with Tyler and sticking with that one way of him communicating with me um, with those numbers has really helped him progress. So now that the whole team has been introduced, let's find out what they learned from being a part of this experience. I, I think the team has been pretty amazing. I've, this is my first time I've been part of anything like this, especially working with the university and just learning from the others on the team on how they've progressed by using the device and what maybe problems they're seeing and um, successes they're seeing has helped me work with Tyler and making sure that I'm progressing as well and learning how to move forward. I know we were trained at the beginning of the year on how to use the device, but mostly he was able to show me right off the get go how to use it and um, we were able to get started right away. Well, be open to learning something new um, let the student guide you. They Then they have ownership of, they, they feel like the big cheese, I guess, when it comes to showing you how to do something. This experience of being a participant on the team has been phenomenal. It gives you more advantages of having more of that home to school, school to home communication within the team. And not only do you have, I know every school is different, but every nine weeks you can get a progress report. At our school, we do that. And then having that extra um, experience within that 30 day period helps know where your child is, what their advancement has been, um, how we can tweak anything in the month or within a period of time between um, report card to report card. It gives us just a better communication between the team and home. I have learned a lot with the team on how to help my son. There's been numerous activities outside of just our monthly meetings. There's been, um, I forget what they're called, but there was other work sessions that I was participating in that not only helped with my son, but have a better understanding of different and various areas of the needs that other children face along with him. It's nice having the team. Meetings are normally challenging just because it's always during planning time, <laughs> but um, it's just helpful having people to talk to, having other people to help answer questions, or if we have a question and we have no idea how to find that answer, there's at least more than one person that can, can work through it and help us. I would say the monthly meetings are very helpful. Um, write down any anything that you are questioning throughout that month, I would say keep a notebook so then when you go to the meeting that you're ready, you have your questions on your mind and you don't forget to ask a question if you need to ask a question. I would also suggest having like a Google Doc that everyone can see so if you have a question you can maybe everybody has a specific color because then you could have your questions down there and then maybe throughout the month if someone is looking at that and they know the answer they can just answer it right then instead of having to wait until the meeting. I think the biggest thing is um, as we uncovered things that we didn't understand we had resources to go to. Um, by being part of the communication competency team, we met um, the vision specialist and we were able to ask our administrators to bring her in um, to consult with us because we thought there may be a problem with his vision because he wasn't able to, uh, he struggled with learning letters and sounds and he struggled with learning shapes and colors and finding icons on his device. And through working with her, she discovered that he has an auditory memory deficit. And so now we've been able to make things look similar across the board and teach him um, features of words to help him um, to learn to begin to read. So just having people to go to, to ask questions and to get feedback and to bounce ideas off of really has been priceless. Just how thankful I am to have been a part of this and um, the support that we got, you know, not only from the people who worked with him, but um, from DD at State Support 8 and um, meeting every month with you. Just, I mean, the depth of knowledge that we were able to pull on um, to help him has been amazing. 
really through teamwork. And you know, not every challenge gets resolved right away. There are still several things that we brought up in the build in the beginning of this that we haven't achieved with him yet, but we just keep working on it and just keep drawing on each other's knowledge and support. And we see a little bit of growth in some areas and a lot of growth in other areas, and we keep just keep working on it. The hardest part has been you just want that instant Oh, look, we did this and look where we are. And it's not always that easy. Probably the, the most interesting thing that I think I learned as a director was the importance of um, the peer supports in learning to use the assistive technology for the students. I think a lot of people think you need a, an adult to model that use or, or to interact. And, and in essence, it, it, the research was very clear in stating it is much more encouraging when it's a, a student's peers working with him or her and even using the device uh, to get the student to interact. And so again, for us trying to get the um, technology in place at a young age for the student, I think the encouragement from the peers and just the interest of the peers uh, in, in wanting to learn more about the device and how it works helped encourage its use. And in terms of just the process, um, it's been wonderful. You know, we've had the benefit of having um, coaching from you ladies from the University of Kentucky, having that level of expertise at our disposal and just being able to collaborate with the experts in the field and problem solve, I think is the, for me, the biggest benefit of those regular and consistent monthly team meetings is we are really able to examine a problem of practice. When something comes up, um, we're able to address it very quickly and we're able to talk through this, this progress and the things that are working well and then any obstacles and we have multiple experts in the room together or over Zoom together uh, to be able to think through things. And that is such a benefit as opposed to, you know, one teacher in the classroom or even just a few folks trying to think through when you have that that um, level of collaboration. I think the, the knowledge fund just deepens for all of us. And so that's been wonderful. That as a team piece, I think was incredibly beneficial. I wish all teams everywhere had to consider something like that. Um, I know when even me, it's like when I think about assistive technology for kids with low vision or kids who are blind, I'm not necessarily like reaching out to other team members to say like, hey, help me with this assistive technology trial. But when you looked at it as a team approach, um, I feel like you're making sure that you're truly choosing a device or choosing the approach for the device that really meets the student's needs. So what does Tyler say about this? Obviously, because of his young age, he didn't attend the team meetings, but we did ask him if he would like to participate in the video. And we asked him if he had something he would like to tell us. He would rather talk about his four-wheeler, but when Ms. Nowak, who knows him best, led the conversation, this is what he said. An adult off-screen asks Tyler several questions about his age, grade, and interests. He responds by using his fingers to represent numbers, using gestures, and using his AAC device. He points to his mouth and raises his fingers to show he likes to talk with his friends using his mouth and hands instead of using his AAC device all of the time. How old are you, Tyler? Eight. Eight years old and in second grade, right? You in second grade? Tyler, what, what types of things do you like to talk about with your friends? Carbon board. You like to talk oh. about playing on your board. board? What else? Four wheeler. Your four wheeler? Mm -hmm. I know those are your two favorites. There's one other thing that you usually say that you like to talk about. IPad. Yep. Playing video games on your iPad. Yeah, awesome. Um, how do you like to talk with your friends? Do you like to use talky all the time? No. How, what's your favorite way to talk with your friends? What do you like to do? You like to use your mouth? And what other things do you like to use to talk to your friends? Your talky. And there's one other way that you can talk to your friends that I see you use all the time. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, so I think that you like using your mouth and your hands. In summary, working as a team, including the family, providing training for the adults, involving peers, modeling, and enabling supported decisions by Tyler 
made all the difference for this young second grader and helped him take talkie out of his backpack and claim it as his voice. Tyler is sitting on the rug with classmates. Each child has a personal whiteboard and pen to write solutions to math problems. The teacher stands at the board talking with the students. 